Okay, hi, so in this video we're going to quickly look at the tests for different positive ions. Now, the most um, well-known one is known as the flame test, and so we're going to have a look at that one first. Okay, so this is known as the flame test, as I've said, the flame test. And what this tests for is positive metal ions. Okay, not all metal ions, because some metal ions don't give you um, the color change that we are expecting to see. But the flame test will test for a fair amount of different metals. Now, what this is here is a nichrochrome loop. Okay, nichrochrome loop. Now, this is where we're going to put the metal ion, okay, the sample of metal ion. So if you have a metal ion and you don't know what it is, you're going to put it on this loop, and then eventually we're going to transfer it over here to the Bunsen burner, and we're going to get a result. Okay, first of all, what you need to know, though, is that you dip, okay, in concentrated hydrochloric acid, okay, so HCl aqueous for short, Okay, we then heat it to clean it, and then we just dip it back in the acid again before we're going to add it to the compound. Okay, now after we've dipped again, we then uh, dip, let's get rid of that, we dip into metal compound. Because normally, our metal ions are going to be aqueous, okay? They're going to be dissolved. This isn't a test for a solid metal. This is a test for metal ions. Okay, what we then do is we take the loop, okay? So, like so, we take the loop and we hold it. That's going to overlap a little bit. Oh, well, we hold it in a blue roaring flame. Okay, so this here is a Bunsen burner. Okay, so this is the Bunsen burner. And we have it on a blue roaring flame. Okay, we have it on a blue roaring flame. So what you'd actually see is you wouldn't really see this yellow part of the flame. Okay, I'm going to shade that in quickly blue just so you know what I mean. Okay, so you hold it in the blue flame and what you'll get is you'll get a result. Okay, so this flame is going to turn a different color depending on what metal ion you have. And as an example, I know that if we have barium, the flame turns green. And so if on this loop we had barium ions, okay, what we would get, it wouldn't be as obviously dramatic as this, is a green flame instead of our blue flame from the Bunsen burner. And so let's summarize down here, okay, because there are a few uh, metal ions that you need to know the color of. So metal ion, ion and color. So we have lithium ions, okay, we have sodium ions, we have potassium ions, we have calcium ions, and we have barium ions, okay? I'm going to put in the charges because lithium, sodium, and potassium are all plus one. Calcium and barium are both plus two. Okay, and now let's have a look at the color changes you get. Or well, as I just mentioned, for barium, okay, you're going to get green. For calcium, you're going to get a red color formed. Potassium gives us a lilac color. Okay, so that's like a bright purple. Now, sodium ions will yield our yellow color. And lithium, well, sorry, lithium is going to give us a darker red. Okay, darker red than calcium. Okay, and we call that a crimson red. Okay, and so they are the ions that you need to know. Okay, and now there's one more test that you need to know, which is the sodium hydroxide test. Okay, so the sodium hydroxide test. Now, the sodium hydroxide test will test for three uh, different metal ions, okay? And those metal ions are magnesium. Okay, so Mg... Mg2+, plus. okay, calcium, Ca2+, plus. and aluminium, which is Al3+, plus. okay, so these are the ions which uh, we can test for using the sodium hydroxide test. So, if we have a solution that contains any of these three ions, okay, and we add sodium hydroxide solution, okay, I'll just put aqueous there to say solution, aq, then we form a white 
precipitate. Precipitate. Okay, and that just means a white solid. So a white solid will form in the solution if we add um, sodium hydroxide to those compounds. Now that means that we have in that um, unknown compound either magnesium, calcium, or aluminium ions. Okay, and then we need to distinguish between those. So if we then add excess, okay, so an excessive amount of sodium hydroxide, okay, we just carry on adding more sodium hydroxide then what happens is aluminium, okay, so the Al3 plus a precipitate that's formed will dissolve, okay? So I'll put this in brackets because what we're actually talking about here is the precipitate, okay? So the precipitate will dissolve, okay? Whereas the precipitates from magnesium or calcium, okay, won't dissolve, will not dissolve. So now what we've got is we have a test for these three ions. So if we add the sodium hydroxide and we get the white precipitate, we know that um, our solution contains one of those three. Now, if we add loads more sodium hydroxide and that precipitate dissolves, we can say that it was aluminium 3 plus ions that were in our solution, okay? If it does not dissolve, then we can say, well, it wasn't aluminium, it must have been magnesium or calcium, okay? So then lastly, we need a way of distinguishing between these two, okay? So Mg2 plus and Ca2 plus, okay, can be distinguished by the test we've already looked at, okay, by flame test, okay, because if you if you remember, I'll go back up and show you, calcium, okay, which is here, produces a red flame, okay, so if we carry out the flame test with our solution and it's red, we can say that it's calcium, okay, magnesium produces no change in the flame color, so there's no color, okay, so your blue flame will remain blue. Whereas calcium ions produce a red, oh sorry, that's a different kind of red, a red flame. Okay, so if we carry out the sodium hydroxide test and we obtain a precipitate, we can say it's aluminium, calcium or magnesium. If that precipitate then doesn't dissolve, if we add more sodium hydroxide, it is magnesium or calcium. If it does dissolve, it's aluminium, okay? We then carry out the flame test. If the flame test gives us no result, so there's no color, it's magnesium. If the flame test gives us a red flame, then it's calcium. Okay, so I'm gonna stop there. That was just a quick one. Um, if you do have any questions on that, please feel free to send me an email using the link below or comment in the box and I'll be sure to get back to you. Okay, but as usual, please do like and subscribe because there are many more videos coming very soon, but I look forward to seeing you in the next one.